Welcome to The Good Time Show. I'm your host, Damon Epps. Today, I'd like to introduce Griffin Loop, a visionary artist transforming environments and experiences with his stunning large-scale works of art. Before we dive into our conversation, I'd like to give our special thanks to our sponsors. Blake Street House is a vibrant social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves, to make our community and the world a more inclusive and better place for all. And The Ledger. The world's first bikeable building offering a state-of-art workspace solutions and redefining the concept of work-life integration in downtown Bentonville. It's more than just a place of work. It's a hub for community and innovation. All right. Now, in this episode, we explore Griffin's creative journey, his innovative launch intention project, and how his art engages, inspires communities. And now, let's dive in. Griffin. Welcome to the Good Time Show. Thanks for having me. Well, I am super excited. Um, it's as if we've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Take two. You know, sometimes the second time or even third time is even better. Things happen for a reason. Things happen for a reason. Okay. I know you very well. Uh, you are an artist that, um, I guess we would consider you an LA artist maybe, but you came from a lot of different places before we dive in. I think it's best that you explain who you are before I do, because I'll screw it up. Titles are interesting for me, right? Um, first and foremost, I'm a human being. You are a human being. I'm um, an outstanding one. I'm a inspired and curious human being. And so I think that propels me and willing to explore. Um, so that propels me into what I do. Um, location is the same thing. I, uh, I'm just here right now um, doing what I do. And what you do is very interesting. I guess the first thing, how I, before I got to know you uh, and before I met you, I saw a 50-foot steel paper plane yep. that sits in front of Blake street. Yeah. Tell me, I don't want to get in the launch and prediction project quite yet, obviously, yep. but I want to talk about, um, it's pretty incredible to build a 50 foot paper plane. And I want to know how and why you did it. Yeah. I, uh, I think I'm most fascinated about potential. You know, I see I see the world in potential, you know, whether it's settings, experiences, humans, um, my own skill sets and constantly, you know, progressing and evolving, um, which drives me to make things like this. Um, Giant paper airplane. I mean, we can get into it more a little later. You know, uh, it's a symbol we all can relate to. It's one of the first things we create and launch when we're children. So I think it embodies that sense of imagination, freedom, exploration, wonder, um, as well as something to launch into the world. You know, so the the purpose and meaning behind the the project is just that. It's an opportunity for us to uh, clarify our intention, and it supports launching that into action. You know, um, I have many paper airplanes across the country, and it's been an incredible journey. It was actually the first large scale piece of art that I uh, that I built back in 2014. And where was that? It was in uh, Eden, Utah. Eden, Utah. Yeah. Um, is that one? Is that one fifty feet as well? It is. Um, the project came about completely natural. I, uh, a colleague of mine, I was doing a project out there. Um, I built him a one foot metal paper airplane. Okay. For his birthday. No rhyme or reason for the symbol. Um, that's just what came to be. And I gave it to him for his birthday and complete casual conversation. He said, wouldn't it be cool to make a big one? 
And that just struck me instantly. I was like, yes. And I became obsessed with the idea. And I could see it. And then I started talking about it and figuring it out. You know, I... I make things, so figuring out how to make it. I actually worked with my dad on the initial design, and uh, that was kind of the easy part, but I was so driven to do this. I convinced the company I was working with to let me do it. I raised funds and then explored everything I needed to do to make it happen, you know, talked to cities about permits or things like this, and did a lot of things outside my existing wheelhouse, but I was driven by the idea. And so the first plane I made was one foot, and then the second plane I made was 50 feet. Wow. And through that process, you know, I – a lot kind of struck me, but it was all happening in real time. Um, Two days before I installed the the work of art, I was connected to a school, and I decided to bring out about 30 students out to the sculpture. And at first it was just to show them this, you know, large piece of art that's in their community – And then I I was thinking about the project, you know, that's when I kind of realized, you know, things about the paper airplane. Like I said, one of the first things we make, one of the first things we launch. And then I realized my process in that project, the power of intention. You know, this idea struck me, but it struck me on a very like intuitive core level and drove me past every obstacle, hurdle, fear, everything. And I did it, did it in a pretty incredible short amount of time. I built the 50 foot one without any mechanical or assistance from others. So it was a very strategic build as the pieces, you know, turning the pieces, manipulating them before they got too heavy. Um, and yeah, so I was taken back by that. And how heavy is this thing? Um, this particular model, just cause it's a frame and sheeted. I mean, it's around probably like 10,000 pounds. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, but as the kids were coming out, you know, I, I, I named it on the spot there. I was like, wow, this is a launch intention. And like I said, I was just going to explain the art sculpture to these uh, students. And when they were coming out, I'm like, I'm going to talk about intention. And I hadn't really interacted in that way, you know, share, sharing something to kids like this. And we all gathered. I had a... Uh, There was like five friends that flew into town just to see the sculpture, and it was about 30 students. And I just shared the example, you know, this one in particular of that intuitive idea and desire and following that and what can happen. And then I just shared other examples in my life, you know, and I I was experiencing this in real time, realizing, you know, those things that hit us on an intuitive level. We, when we decide to follow them and pursue them and let that lead the action, amazing things can happen. And we split up into small groups and we had the students write an intention of their own. And then we reconvened and made a circle and went one by one sharing the intentions. And it was the most profound thing I've ever heard. There wasn't uh, any individual or material goals. It was all either like, worldly service or profound vulnerability, you know, things like I want to be brave. I want to find my voice. Things that for some reason are hard to share, you know, and instantly I knew what the project was. And then since then it's just grown and grown naturally, you know, by me taking intuitive leaps, connecting with certain people that get it, getting the plane into communities, engaging it, and then every time anyone has any interaction with this, it kind of just grows and grows and grows. Um, I've just learned a lot about it. You know, it's an amazing, you know, social. So the kids, so I find it so inspiring that these, that the young kids, well, especially the group of kids, I don't know if these kids are just special, but I guess kids just can, automatically just tell you what's on their mind. A hundred percent. It's funny. I just came, I just had lunch before this and I sat down on a table with like, there was a (laughs) four and six year old. The conversation is amazing. 
It's so the, it's just like I think kids are like a pure <laughs> a pure channel. You know, you ask them a question, you get an answer instantly. There's no like filter of that or imagination. You know, the stories that young kids tell are amazing, um, factual or not. And working with kids over the years, I realized so many things. I, I think it's beyond odd that we tend to tell kids things and not ask them questions. Um, and I've seen, you know, I've been able to see with this project kind of that where that changes in life. Um, I always reference, I was in Florida, I think it was like 2018, and we planted a plane in a community park, um, and I had, the community came out, and I had people write their intentions with chalk on the plane, and there was this oh, one. On, on the, on the plane like itself. on the metal. Yeah. Oh, cool. And one family in particular, you know, they show up, and... You know, any kid from zero to 10, you start asking them what they want, it's right there. Snatch the chalk out of your hands before you even finish the sentence and they're writing their intention. You know, and then you get into kind of teenage years and you can see this kind of filter of what will other people think? Is it cool? You know, and then the mom. Will I fit in? Yeah, well, I fit in. There's that filter. You know, and then the mom, I I asked her to uh, do it. She's like, oh. You know, that's, it's so cute, but this is my life, you know, pointing to her family. I was like, no, no, no. What's, what's your intention? What, are, what do you need? What do you want? You know, and she goes through that. And then classic, the dad just kind of stands there and he goes, that's pretty cool. How'd you make it? You know, I'm like, well, it's metal, but what's your intention? Oh, I'm good. I'm like, okay. And walk away. And, but sure enough, 10 minutes later, the dad's writing, remember to smile, you know? So it's like. I think it's tapping into this. That's a really, by the way, I, I'm not going to lie. Writing intentions, even for me, is hard. I yeah. mean, I'm an L.A. guy. Of and course. I think, um, uh, but just remember to smile is pretty great. <laughs> I mean, I, it's all great. When you just said that, I was like, what a what a great intention yeah. for a guy that didn't want to. But, but think about it. We have so many thoughts and like intuitive thoughts a day all the time. Should I do this? Should I do, you know, mm -hmm. but we keep it inside. And the act of sharing that intention, I think that's the most important step. You know, it solidifies it. It gets it out of yourself. It relieves the power of your own perception. Put it out in the world. I want to dive into like attention a little bit. Because okay. Like, because we, I, I really do have a hard time with intentions. Yeah. Like when somebody says it, and I think a lot of people do because, um, I mean, we're both LA. I mean, we, you know, I'm a Texan moved to LA. You're a, well, you've been all over the place. We'll dive into that world. But, yeah. um, how would you describe what an intention is? Yeah, that's great. I, uh, I want to back up, you know, after this thing kind of caught wind and I, started activating different, you know, locations and communities with this. You know, I had I had the the thought at one point I'm like, wow, this is my gift to the world. You know, like I'm here to just facilitate other people in this and very humbly quickly realized I need this reminder more than anyone to be okay with doing what I want to do. You know, and so as anything it has to lead by example, you know, and I was, it's not something to tell someone, you know, telling other people what to do is, a, I think, a really toxic thing, you know. So this project, for me, if it's starting with me, is just to live it every day and then share that, but from that place of just like an example or just holding space for others to do the same. And I think that's where it really is just amazing. But to get back to your question, you know, I, I've always been a big dreamer, very ambitious, you know, and so, you know, we get all the, the trends of what to do to, you know, be productive or, you know, entrepreneur or whatever. And like for a long time, I would write lists of very specific goals. However, my mind works in a way is like I'll set a goal and, you know, even if the world takes me left, mm -hmm. 
which is where I was ultimately supposed to do. If I didn't check off that goal, I would I would think it was a failure. You know, so I had a hard time writing actual checklists. So funny, I'm doing the exa- I'm doing that right now. You know, because then I have an attachment to that, whether or not I should be doing that or not. So an intention to me is, and this is just how I use it, is things that will help me just be who I am and achieve whatever goals might come up. But I I do a, you know, I'm on a, I have a text thread or I, I at least text about 10 people a day every morning what my intention is and we all do that. And that's my, cool. My intention is more. That's really, that's really cool. Yeah. And it, it, it's, you know, this is accountability. This is taking responsibility for my own actions. You know, so for me, a lot of times, like, I need to listen today. I need to be of service. And I just set that intention in the morning. And I have seen by sharing it with someone, then that. It's not like they are checking in on me, but there's a sense of accountability there and support. Support. You know, I— Community. Yeah, I always say, you know, like, we all have things we want to do, you know, and it's cool to write it down for yourself or post it notes on your wall or tell a loved one, but that's too safe. You know, I think the world's waiting for us to declare our intention, our role, what we want. And every time, without a doubt— you speak it, and there might be someone in the room that could help you out. But it just it sets the path. All right, I want to play. Um, <laughs> I want to play. Uh, so, you know, my world. I've obviously been down a really. Speaking of which, the reason why there has been a delay in the Good Time Show is uh, my mom passed away. You know, yeah. so that was something. God, it's so weird. The emotions can always come back. It's like you try whatever. But anyway. Mom dies, other things happen, and it's just been a weird transformation of, like, getting back to at least ground zero and yeah. getting back to where what it was. And so it, it's funny when you say, like, what's your intention right now? I judge myself so much yeah. about, like, where – what that's going to be or what I should say right now. And so I was just thinking. I'm like – and it's literally just a blank spot of, like, what's my intention. But I guess – like I like I, I it's funny I just want approval. If would my intention be even like just simply like let everything go and start having fun. Yeah. That's that a great a, one. It's a great one. And just to be so clear, there's no wrong intention. The intention is something that's coming from you. And only we know what we should be doing or that we want to do. This is right. a, you know, this isn't this is accountability for your own like well being and your own happiness. How, how I mean it could be interpreted in many different ways. For me, this is about getting to the root of who I actually am. You know, I'm someone who have never never fit into boxes. And Without the tools or the confidence to know that that's okay, the world can be a really confusing place. When I was young, it was hard. You know, I've always had a a lot of energy and ambition, and I see the world a certain way, and I see my, my, how I partake in a certain way. And it's taken a long time of living to just feel okay with that. You know, it's not the same as what I see everywhere or, you know, different environments or systems or work or school or anything. But it's inside of me. It's coming through me. I know what I want to do. I know how I want to feel. And like, So I always use it as a way to clarify my, like, just my well-being and keep me accountable for things that I need to work on. But this is just for you, so it can't be 
it never can be wrong. You know, it's just about us doing it. You know, and so if you need to have fun right now and you need to let things go, remind yourself that every day. Yeah. Or, I, to, or, or tell people, you know, this, uh, another thing is, you know, I'm, and I think it's why I do large scale art. I'm just fascinated by the space it creates. And I use okay. the word space, like physical space, figurative space, or like spiritual space, you know, art. I think is the best vehicle for an individual to have an experience because it meets you uniquely wherever you are at. And if you see something and feelings come up and emotions coming up, that's coming from you. And that's providing a space for you to have a moment and see that and see what those feel like and see how or where that could lead you. Um, and like I said, I, you know, the, it's just happened naturally over time of, you know, the paper airplane, it provides like incredible space for people to do that. A, we all relate to it, you know? So when I, you know, when we're gathered in a group because we all relate to this symbol, it's almost like we all relate. You know, it's the greatest, like, icebreaker. It's fun. It's, and especially when they're in the large form, it, you're instantly transported to that world of kind of imagination and, like, wonder and, like, boom. And then we can have a conversation. All right, let's use that, like, feelings. And what, what do you want to do? What's your intention? You know, and I, I think it's just, you know, I, I, the feedback I get, you know, a lot of times is like, oh, or especially around the kids stuff, you know, people are like, oh, it's so cute. I'm like, thank you. But I view it as like a non-negotiable as a human being is to be able to clarify what you want and what you need because no one's going to do it for you. You know, and I. It's hard to do. Of course it is. But it's like anything. It's a muscle. It was hard for me to do. And sometimes it's still hard for me to do. And I've been, a, you know, this close to it for so long. But the more you do it, then you do it. You know, I'll text, I'll talk about strangers on like. What was your intention today? Ooh, good one. Actually, I'll have to look at a text. What's great about getting people to do this with is a lot of times I won't feel like setting an intention in the morning. Right. <laughs> but my buddy will text me one. And that'll either get me an action to do my own or a lot of times, and it happens all the time. One of my best friends, Troy, shout out, Troy. What up, Troy? New York. Said, what up, New York? New York chat. In intention for today is to breathe. Stop clenching and take a breath. And I wrote, love that. Same. You know, I, I have a lot of things going on where, like, if I'm left to my own, you know, mind or, you know, stress or whatever, you know, oh, I feel clenched, but like, so I needed that this morning and I'm going to use that. It's funny. I'm and, and start small. Yeah. I kind of, I really just kind of jump back into it. You know, I was, you know, living in LA, you're surrounded by it and you just kind of jump in like, yeah, whatever. Date a yoga girl, whatever. Um, I, I, I want to stop one more because like, I'm not one to clarify what is the definition of intention or not. How I use it as, because it's hard wherever, we're, you know, wherever we're at is to be like, what do you want? What do you want to do in life? That's a, such a huge question, you know, and we get stopped on because we don't have answers to those things, but like an intention, like, look what inside, what do you like? What do you need right now? You know, what, what, what do you need just today? You know, so I like to break it down into super, like, small day-to-day, -day, just today. And oftentimes, you know, I've had intentions where I'm like, I need to listen today. And I'll get in a conversation, I'll actually listen to someone, and then they'll provide some information that actually gets me to something that would be, like, a goal. 
you know? So for me, it's like what, what more on a feeling side or like, and we all, we all have things inside of us, you know, it, it's known. I have many friends kind of in similar realms and they talk to people about, you know, getting in touch with who you are, you know, and it's proven, you know, when we're on our deathbed, looking back at life, you know, our regrets are most often the things that we wish we would have tried. Just gone for it. And it's like, it's, it's incredible, like the power we give things when they're inside of us, these ideas, you know, like wanted to change careers or do these things, which are, yes, like I get it, can seem substantial but the power we create it when we hold these things inside are like much more than what they actually are because then it comes the action steps are usually an email conversation you know um but i'm a firm believer we all have it inside of us i do know that at times in you know in my life i wasn't able to like reach those things or see them and i've done you know a lot of self-work over the years to be able to access those things all the time. I think it's just a gauge of like, what are you feeling? And that back to the kid thing, it's right there. This isn't a searchable thing. I mean, it can be, but like, that's why I'm just always blown away by the kids because you ask them anything and it's just like, I always say a 10 year old should be in every business meeting. <laughs> you need an answer, <laughs> you'll get it right away. The movie Big. That was a great. <laughs> that movie Big. That was a great movie. Uh, I'm gonna. I mean, we're read. gonna save launch attention till the end. But now we talked. We got. We got it in. We did. Yeah, but that's great. Well, let's just talk about what. Like, well, we're here. I'm gonna read this. Okay. Um. Inspired, curious. No labels. No divides. No barriers. Deep appreciation for time and space. I create to explore and communicate with myself and the world, to push, to grow, to question, to embrace, to respect what we as humans can do and pay homage to the infinite powers and beauties beyond. When I remove identity from the equation, anything is possible. I will always explore further. Yeah, I mean, th things come through, you know, I think I wrote that in like 2000, I don't even know, 17, 18, but that is like core of who I, who I am, who I ultimately am and who, what I do, you know, that's why the, the identity thing, that's why I have a hard time with like labels, you know, even, I mean, yes, I create art, so I've, I will embrace the artist, you know, but like. I learned from, someone told me once and it really struck me, identity is our like most uh, like minimizing thing. We Like that's a barrier because our, our uh, intellect sole responsibility is to protect our identity. So if I say that I'm an artist that just works with metal, Ins my insides will protect that and like keep me there where I am striving to break all barriers. You know, I do these things because I'm like, whoa, can that be done? You know, and, and large scale art for me is a personal journey, you know, because every, the process of a, every single project takes me through the most humbling experience with myself. You know, there's times that every single project that I don't know if it can be done. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I hate it. All these things. And you get through it and you get on the other side. And then like, that's where we, you know, we learn, we grow through adversity. So like, that's why I'm fascinated by the large scale stuff because it takes me through this journey, you know, and I, and also I've realized, you know, a, a, a big thing, theme for me. And actually I realized this kind of recently was, you know, huge change of environment the last couple of years being here. Huge, just major change of like my surroundings and energy and like cultural stuff. 
you be coming to Bentonville or coming to Bentonville, pursuing, you know, I'm building a really large studio property, you know, so I've been embarked on these like big things that are all journeys in themselves. And it's been challenging, you know, and for a while, I just couldn't create, you know, and I've realized, I mean, going back to like clarifying who we are as individuals, you know, like it's so easy to see our world of like what other people are doing. And like, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Like comparison is like, I mean, it's the most toxic thing in the world, especially, you know, through social medias or things. Cause we see, you know, and so I'm someone I'm like, you know, there's an, an age thing of where you should be, you know, all these things. And I, I can't, I think just as a human can't help myself to be like, Oh, and then I have, you know, self let down or like this self dialogue of I need to be doing some rather than just being here and doing it. And I've realized my creative process and a lot of it shows in my art is like I'm someone who creates from a state of excitement and inspiration. You know, I like to make large things that, you know, the paper airplane, it's, it's to empower, inspire, it's fun. You know, a lot of my other pieces you know, are based a lot around perspective, you know, looking completely different from different angles of view. And Excellent. that comes just from, you know, uh, the power of perception, I think, is our, our is the greatest power that we have. Because I've had moments in my life, I've been sober for, it's actually 14 years tomorrow. But that's crazy. Congratulations. Before, you know, I've always been this ambitious person, but my perception, you know, I was, I was stuck. And I've literally looked at a view and been like, the world, the whole world's against me, you know. And through, I've just had a different perception looking at the same view saying the world is for me. So I know the power of our own dialogue, our own perception, especially the perception of ourself, you know, and so I'm constantly seeking to work on that and get out of myself and just present. And that's what creating does for me. You know, when I'm in the zone or, you know, time is nothing, thoughts are nothing. I'm almost meditating, just making something. And then I get to step back and realize what came to life, you know? So it's almost like an outer body experience, but my whole thing is like, just like doing and being present. Yeah, you making art is a little different than what most artists are doing. <laughs> um, it's. That, and th that's why like the, the, t the title, you know, it's so funny, you know, I've, I've, I've had it, there's times where it serves me because it's this like mysterious uh -huh. realm or I walk in the room, they're like, you know, what does that mean? You like paint? You know, you, you have like crayons or something? I'm like, whoa, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about like intentions or things. So like, I think titles are a tricky one. Right. Any preconceived notion is, is danger. You know, that's why a lot of, you know, the experiences or environments that I build out or the, a lot of the perspective pieces you know, I believe that like first impression of something has to be somewhat familiar or like safe. So we embark, but then I like to offer a completely different experience or perception because I love when I, I love when personally, when I catch myself thinking I have an idea of what I'm walking into or thinking I know something about someone, but that's just based off like past things. So that's funny because we're like walking into something new but we're using like past experience to judge what we're going into. Mm -hmm. And then you get halfway through a conversation. You're like, whoa, you know, you're completely different than what I thought. And I love that. Yeah, and so I think we, I think that's just bringing back of like what the present moment is endless. You know, the opportunities, the potential, it's endless if we're purely present, you know? And so I think whether it's, the art I create or the environments that I build out. Um, I think they're all techniques to uh, kind of disregard what we thought. 
we knew or what we thought we were getting into and allow just the pure, you know, that's where I love the word magic happens is when we're all just like working together and, you know, we've been on projects together where you're just, when everyone is so in it, you're just doing and then all of a sudden something incredible is made, you know, and you can't even take like responsibility because it was just like the energy or the collective energy or whatever was just like, everyone was just there with a, you know, a collective goal or a passion put together and like incredible things are built. Speaking of coming together with someone, uh, we had the opportunity of working on the Meg Ryan movie Yeah, with uh, what happens later. If anybody hasn't watched it, you should watch it. Uh, it's, I like it. I love, I love the little movie, <laughs> you know, some people get a little crazy. Uh, but it's a really fun little movie. Uh, but you had a really cool opportunity that kind of came out of nowhere. I'm going to let you tell me yeah. how did it all come to be? I mean, it's a true testament to kind of what I was talking about that intersections in life that you couldn't even, when the outcome isn't like dreamt, you know, I, I, I didn't have putting art into movies as one of my visions or in my realm of like thought. And I had heard um, that this movie was going to be filmed here, but I'm like, okay, cool, you know? And Shout out to Kristen Mann. Yep. And what had happened, I was out of town. What had happened is like a month before starting filming. So the film's obviously mm -hmm. made. Happening. Ready to film. It was the first site visit with uh, – Meg Ryan, the cinematographer, and the art director. And they met at Blake Street in town in Bentonville. And when they walked out of the meeting, I have the, there's a 50 foot paper airplane sculpture there. And the art director was like, whoa, wait. He's like, I have one of those sculptures in the like, uh, the dream board or the mood board for this movie. And it wasn't even that one. It was, I think the one I did in Utah and Kristen was like, oh, wow, the artist lives here, you know, who did that. And just because of that, like, coincidence, the art director was like, okay, I want to meet him, you know, and we had an incredible meeting. And it was just trusting, like, that that little bit of information of, like, why that happened and let's lean into mm -hmm. it. And Which is so weird. The world can be so weird. Right, just, and especially— You can be like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, but— yeah. You are from L.A. You moved to Bentonville. These guys are all from either New York, L.A., or around the world to make yeah. a movie. And, they yeah. all... and it's amazing because their objective was set. You know, they were, they were gearing up to start filming. So they knew what they were going to achieve. And they took a moment because of that coincidence. And I met with uh, Jordan. Shout out, Jordan. And... Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's funny. I have one of those. Buttons. And we connected on, like, a creative side. And how to express creativity in different ways, especially when it has to do with uh, a movie. And intuitively, I was like, whoa, like, what if we use some, like, sculpture to help tell the story? And he's like, cool. He's like, and it, he gave me a script. And I read the script, and I came back after a couple hours, and I told him what I thought the script said. And it, we were just, I don't know how to word it, there was a channel open where we were, like, just going for it and trusting. And uh, I got a text and he was like, 5.30 tomorrow, um, we'll meet at Blake Street. And it'll be you, me, and Meg, and you're talking. I was like, okay. <laughs> and again, it was just like in the moment, stay in the moment. And I met and I told her what I thought her story said. And I shared ways to... Because Meg wrote the movie? Uh, directed Directed it. the movie. I think it was a play. Okay. But yeah, she directed it. And I touched on, there was, you know, some human emotions and like connection in the movie. And I shared, what if we highlight, you know, there's two characters that are coming together and coming apart, like kind of ebb and flowing of like being real with each other and like connecting. And they, they kind of go back and forth throughout the whole film. And I said, what if we highlight these things with sculpture? But we connected on like just a creative way where 
She's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. And it was just kind of like, whoa. <laughs> you know, and I, it's funny because like staying true to that, it was like, okay, you know, and I, I started making sketches. And because like I'm someone when like creativity comes, the world stops and it just happens, you know. And so I sketched out a bunch of sculptures. But, of course, presenting it, you know, this is not my realm. You know, it's completely new. I was a little apprehensive, you know, the first couple of days or, you know, times. You know, what do you think about this? And they're like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. And long story short, I made, uh, I think, like 11 or 12 sculptures that were used throughout the film. Um, and it was incredible. It's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was double incredible, incredible because uh, part of the movie was filmed in Crystal Bridges uh, Museum, which is one of the most beautiful museums in the world. Um, so I got to place some of these sculptures in the museum. And this one in particular was in the uh, kind of the lobby entrance of the museum. And it was it kept it up for the duration of the filming. But for me... It was just so amazing because then I got to see in the film world. And back to what I was saying about that collective like goal, what happens, I was so impressed because there was so many different crews doing their part of a movie. So, so many different characters. And I work by myself, so I'm very like sensitive, like, well, all these creatives are going to come together. and But the point where they come together, like, it's not about ego. It's about... A, like obtaining the like potential of what we can do here. So for me, it was incredible to see that, you know, the lighting, the camera crews, you know, the actors, it was just like a really special thing. But for me, I, I mean, I'll remember it forever because off conversation, not even about what we were going to do or like, you know, so, so much in the world, even, you know, for me, you know, presenting artwork, it, you know, spreadsheets and like, what exactly are we going to do? But we just connected on a creative level that like unlocked pure trust and like, let's go. And I like always will be grateful for that. And always that's kind of the bar of, because that's what it's about, you know, especially around creativity is like, it's, it's, it's energy. So if we, if we vibe off each other and like feel each other, whether it's this building, you know, I'm like, I love it when like people trust that and align with people and let them do what they do. That's something I'm, 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 I work on constantly because I'm a lot of fun. I bring a lot of people together. I mean, it's kind of my superpower, a little bit of building a community or having friends and I've witnessed it. Um, uh, but on the same token, <laughs> I just, I have a really funny, I'm, I mean, I'm funny. I think I'm funny. Uh, you know, you are. For, for better or worse, I am, I am, I, you know, it's, uh, but I also love to be sarcastic and all of that. And, um, you know, and sarcasm can kind of start getting into a negative world that can shut down other people's creativity because, yeah. you know, if you're quick witted and you can, whatever, um, Shout out to Tad. I kind of, he was my best friend in the world. And I, you know, took a jab at him and he got really upset. And I kind of owe him a phone call <laughs> real quick. So, <laughs> because he got upset. But, you know, we've been like, we're like brothers. So it's like, you know, but it is funny that um, you forget about the impact that you have on somebody like so quick or so fast. Uh, and I think my generation, that's just kind of how we show love, right? Like, which, you know, like we tooled on people yeah, to yeah, show yeah. love. And it's interesting. I was even telling somebody the other day, I was like, and I don't know if it, sometimes it goes too far because people just can't be sarcastic and they'll judge you on just like, oh, come on, dude, let's just all joke around and let's have some fun. You know, everything has right. to be so serious. But, um, but you do have to watch your words. You have to watch what yeah. you how you affect other people because – you know, you don't, you want people to be creative. You want to people, you want people to shine. And if you, if in a lot of times, you know, I'm, I get insecure with the best of them. We all do. So it's, it's, uh, to bring people into your creative world. It is, it is a magical moment when everybody starts to, you know, I think everybody knows by now I produce a bunch of reality TV, a bunch of nonsense, but like we're, when, when everybody starts hitting that synergy and like you're with a cast and the cast is kind of bought into the creative and then the art department is working and the camera guys are, 
it's like it's like magic. It is what magic. can happen. Um, it was like it was one of the funnest experiences just to you know witness witness that. Um, and you're right, you know, like I I work primarily by myself. And you were kind of touching on a couple things. Is like creativity is very, especially or my experience with it as the creative. It's very sensitive, especially the point where you are ideating, and you are presenting ideas, or it's that first, you know, digesting some information and then thinking about what you can place in there and that's a super like sensitive point right there you know and I've had it many times throughout my life where that can be easily squashed by someone else you know I, I, I'm i someone I, I do like to get it out of myself like ideas and so I'll just say ideas you know and you know someone can be like I don't know about that and I have to be like super like okay that's just you know let me remember that's just like where you're at. I don't know what kind of day you had or whatever, but there is creativity sensitive, I guess what I'm trying to say, you know? And so like when people understand that, then we can get together and we can like massage it and, you know, work with it and like empower it. And then it can become whatever it can become, you know? So it is working with others. I think there has to be an understanding of that like process, at least for me, you know? Um, yeah, that's just what brought up. Do you, um, there's that thing. There's that, there's thing. that thing. There's that thing that I was looking for. It's, uh, the responsibility. You want me to read it? Yeah, you read it. Uh, uh okay, everybody. This thing is, I love this <laughs> so much. This is, uh, and again, I worked for, with a dear friend. Well, this is, and by the way, just, just to, cause we've been diving into the launch intention project. Um, Griffin is obviously an artist. I'll let, you know, let me know if I screw this up. He's an artist that we've learned that by now. His launch intention project is his mission that goes along with his art. Yeah. That it was going to, that is, that expands way beyond your realm and what you, it's just kind of your belief that kind of happened. Yeah. Um, and is this, this is the, this is the responsibility code that came up again. Um, I worked with a dear friend. She's incredible human. Um, and we locked ourselves in the studio, when, uh, my studio in Venice Beach. And I was just, I was kind of in the early years trying to articulate this project. And she worked with me for, it was a, a whole day. And she helped me write this. Um, shout out Jordan. And it's now what known as kind of the responsibility code of the project. And it goes like, it is our greatest responsibility to walk through life with intention and purpose. It means taking time to craft your thoughts, words, and actions with integrity. It means accountability. It requires self inquiry. It is constant refinement. It is an ask for you to hold yourself in the highest, highest regard. It is permission to shine. We are asking for your commitment to yourself, to the earth, to the humans walking with you. There is weight behind this. This is a contract between you and you. This is a call to action. Um, yeah, to kind of touch on some things, you know, I, we talk a lot, you know, there's kind of the, the circles or, you know, everyone's obsessed with like community or, you know, family and I think our ultimate goal is to contribute right to something bigger than ourselves but it absolutely starts with ourselves and our relationship with ourselves you know I always am reminded my relationship with myself dictates every experience in life that I have because if I'm good with myself you know if I'm fulfilled if I'm happy with myself I can sit here with you and listen to you and be there for you. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, if I'm at conflict with myself, or if I'm not taking care of myself, or da da da, da what you say could be a threat to me because I'm trying to compare, or you know, 
compete or if you irritate me. You know, so I almost t- said when you were talking about like sarcasm, like sarcasm, like especially when you're joking, if someone has a problem with that, that's a reflection of them, of where they're at, you know? Right. So for me, I, I always, you know, like I'm a firm believer that starts with ourself, our relationship with ourself, like it takes everything. You know, that's how good parents are formed, good teammates, good bosses, good whatever is formed. Is that, that's that individual that it like takes care of themselves. And we only, you got to take care of yourself before you take care of anyone else or contribute in the world, you know? And I, I, I like it because there's a sense of like, uh, structure and things but like you read about this This is like this is permission to shine this is like who are you like i i love it when people go express themselves and unfiltered and it's also i love the you know it's constant refinement you know i'm someone you know perfectionist you know so i sometimes you know will make something and I don't think it's perfect in the time. So I'll like squash it or not do it. But like, no, this is real life. And we only learn through experience anyways. So like, I love the characters that we see in the world that are like bold enough to just be themselves. And they might say stuff that like, well, we learn afterwards. You probably shouldn't have said that, (laughs) but like, who would have known? Right. We haven't done this before. We're here. So like, if things are inside of you, do that and learn, of course, you know, there, there's, we have a responsibility to be accountable or, you know, as you were saying, read the room, you know, there's a time and place to say things, but like at the end of the day, if you want to say it, say it. <laughs> I know, I, the, the feeling bad or the, you know, it's also just kind of what you were saying earlier about just forgiving yourself and moving on. Like You have gonna, to. You have to. It's. I've been holding on to some stuff that just has weighted me down. And this, it is, and I, and, and I, like I said, I forget my two things. Two things I've been doing lately is that, like, because of my roadblocks, I had some major life changes the past several months. And I just could not get creative going. Like, yeah. I would be like, oh, I'm going to do my podcast today. I'm going to get it going. Yeah. And I would just sit down and I, I just wasn't who I was. I just mm. I didn't, couldn't figure out who I was to be able to do that. I was, you know, still Damon and, doing all the things, but the the deep layer was just such a roadblock or feeling impossible. There was such a, such a world in which I could not connect with. And it, I would say even the past two weeks, it started to change. Like maybe yeah. even the past week. I love that you said that. That's what I was touching on, on, you know, it's funny because oftentimes we can't, we don't identify the things, but like, I got to be myself and feel good before I start putting together an object or create, you know, and like I'm someone too is like, oh, it's Monday. You better go, go get it. Yeah. Go hard. But like, if I don't feel good, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Or I do shitty work, you know? So I love that you say that, you know? And so there's, there's, you know, opportunity to identify some other things that you, you need to put attention to, you know, especially you know, your experience in recent time, there's a, there's a substantial occurrence that happened and feelings that need to be filled, like felt and processed and dealt with and completed before you can just like do the other things, you know, especially with work. It's so funny. Yeah. I, I mean, and I'm so guilty of it. You know, I'll be in a, a there'll be a timeline or something and I will neglect eating, sleeping. And like for the longest time, I like fantasize that or like, oh, it's cause I, you know, I'm in it. But I'm also just like chasing away from things or neglecting certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm, it's funny. I never stopped working. I just, it's, the creative world, it, 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 this kind of maybe can go to anyone. My buddy said to shout it. We're doing a lot of shout outs. Shout out to Nathan Skolnick. Um, my buddy Nathan Skolnick was a screenwriter and we were talking and he would, 
uh, and I've got another guy that I interviewed already, Roland Smith, who's written 50 books, who doesn't believe in writer's block. He just doesn't believe it. He said, you know, you're a writer. You get up and write. He mm. said, you might not write good stuff. Mm. You just, you know, whatever. And my buddy, I was told, and I go, man, I'm just not thinking of anything creative. And he goes, you know, he goes, he goes, look, it takes me, I never know when my next idea is going to come. I never know what it's going to be. Right. He goes, so a lot of times when I feel like I'm in, when I'm not feeling creative or I feel like I'm a failure, a lot of people be like, oh, I got writer's block. I can't do it, whatever. He said, you know, that's just perspective. Mm-hmm. It could be that your brain is searching and nothing's grabbed. It's, it's, it's like, you're just like, oh, I, I, I need to, I, I need to do this because I'm an artist and I have to build this today. Yeah. Or I need to be as funny as I can be because whatever, but. I'm looking for my inspiration. Yeah. And he said, you know, I don't know. He goes, but when you lock into it, then you lock in. He goes, and then it comes to stage mm-hmm. two. He said, so if you start looking at the the times when you're when you have writer's block is writer's block or it's negative or you're a failure, he goes, it's just the creative time of you searching for your next inspiration. I love that. And I thought that was super cool because I I am a big component of um, that I'm really working on of like just recently I started saying oh I'm so behind yeah well I what who am I behind with yeah, like I, I I have to do these I have to do all the things that yeah sure I I wish I would have done them three months ago while it's while I just physically mentally couldn't do them right. but the reality is the ball just got transferred here and I might as well just wake up and be like oh I'm here like, right that's it right like no I love that what came to mind was like, you gotta keep on moving, right? So yes. like, if you think about it as like movement, you know, like stress or you know depression or you know these or writer's block, you know, if, if I just sit there and dwell in it, it's gonna stay there for a long, a long time. time. So movement through expression, whether or not that like goes anywhere or like you do anything, that's like moving it and like you need outlets let things go, whether it's talking to someone or, you know, sort of physical activity or anything, but it's like movement, you know, keep that going. And then, cause you will get inspired again. You know, I get freaked out when I'm not making something brilliant, but then it's like, that, there's that mindset. I have an expectation to hit a home run every day, every day, every day, every day I hit home runs, but I've Damon Epps killing. <laughs> yeah, you pretty, know what? Right now, day. I don't know if you know it guys know out there, <laughs> but this is, this is the best podcast in the world right now. I don't know. Today. But uh, keep moving. I've had a incredible, actually, the last month, you know, because I am building the studio, I've had, like, hard objectives, you know. And, and I want to talk uh, – and give us a little – because yeah. we haven't talked about the studio at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's talk about the studio. You came from you came from um, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, yeah. in Venice Beach. You had an incredible studio, uh, and then you know, tell me a little bit about that and like what brought you to Bentonville and yeah. then what you're doing now. Um, uh, and then you can you know, Bentonville into- started 2018. I was commissioned to do the uh, giant paper airplane in town. Oh, okay. Um, client had seen it, my Utah one. Came out here and it was the first art piece that I came here and fabricated it here rather than just like making it in LA and shipping it. So I spent time here and, you know, at the time it wasn't on my radar to be here, but it was a new place. And I, like any experience, I, I, I love new things, you know, so I got to observe and, you know, it's wild in that short amount of time you know, the, the town was starting to develop a little bit, you know, and I think it was actually, it was before I knew it was going to be a school, but Thaden school was being built. And, um, it's an incredible architecture piece. And a lot of my inspiration comes from architecture. I like lines and linear and large object objects that live within an environment or a setting. Um, every night after, I was done welding. I'd actually Uber and just like sit on that property. So I spent some time here and then uh, I ended up coming back about every eight months to do another public art piece. So started frequencing here and like within that amount of time, I came back and the growth is insane here, right? 
it's growing faster than anywhere I've seen. So it's true. Every eight months, it was like a new town. Um, so that was intriguing. And then the pandemic hit and LA got hit hard, especially Venice Beach and my studio. And I decided to close, close that down. And, um, my wife and two puppies, we loaded up and we drove out here and we spent a month and this is what, 2021, something like that. Um, End of 2020. End of 2020. Yeah. Spent a month. I did a, another public art piece here. And then we stayed another month and I did a piece that I took to Aspen. Um, and then just kind of realized it was the thought. It was like, oh, I should open a studio here, you know, because of the space. You know, I could buy land here. You know, I make large objects. I love, you know, my my studio space has always been a reflection of like where I'm at and like my inspiration and I consider it as part of my art is the space I create in and I love to engage people in it. Um, so I made the decision to come out here and so I'm building a large studio property um, and it's 15 acres and then I designed um, the main structure where I'll uh, produce my art, but also showcase it. Um, so I'm making kind of my own, I guess, outdoor museum. Um, I'm doing a lot of earth formation work right now. So using heavy machinery to shape the earth in creative ways. Um, so the property has, you know, I, I started, I, m my father built ski lifts. So I mm -hmm. grew up with a, a pretty wide skill set, you know, operating heavy machinery, welding, you know, moving large objects in creative ways, working with, you know, on extreme slopes, figuring out that, you know, it's, it actually translates kind of into what I, what I do is like pretty like substan, you know, your the materials or the size of things is pretty substantial, like powerful you know, muscle manipulating these objects, but then it's like paired with like absolute finesse and like precision. Um, and that's kind of what welding is, operating machinery. It all has that balance and I love that. Um, so I started off doing just all the kind of dirt work for my property, you know, made the building pad, cleared out what was. Um, and then I started shaping like pathways and envisioning where sculptures will be or, you know, how people will move throughout the land. Um, and then got ha started having fun with it and creating these really kind of um, large dramatic earth forms. I have, you know, like 30 foot tall mounds of dirt, you know, and I started kind of digesting what I'm about is like blocking that view, you know, back to like stripping away the preconceived notion of what we're getting into and intriguing journeys through the property, which allows like reveals, you know, um, throughout. So yeah, there's pathways, tunnels, you know, little intimate amphitheaters in the woods. Um, so I'm bringing to life a pretty substantial, just the things that I'm curious about. Um, art, but then the experience around it. Um, so yeah. And then, uh, in the back, so I transi transitioned from, uh, that, yeah, that's, that's the entry. So that's the view from the parking lot. So what I wanted to do, like the strategy behind this was to block my studio. It's a, it's a large, it's a 6,000 square foot building. The design is cool, but I want you to go see it. You know, so this blocks the view of it, but there's this cool pathway. There'll be art within it. And then I made it so you are about 50 feet away from the building when you actually see it for the first time, you know, putting you in that right spot to see it and it be that much more impactful. Um, so those are the some of the strategies that I'm fascinated about. So this is kind of my giant sandbox where I get to experiment with them. It's very cool. You also have built now a... Um a private dirt track. A, yeah. A private jump track um, with your buddies over at uh, YT Studio. Y YT Bicycles. YT yeah, Industries. so after uh, building ski lifts, I transitioned um, 
kind of my expression in the snow industry was building uh, terrain parks and freestyle parks. And I grew up building, you know, like skate ramps. And then I built for over a decade, uh, you know, big freestyle parks on mountains. And it's funny, you know, for a while when I transitioned into large scale sculpture, you know, I thought they were kind of separate, but thinking back, you know, this is all about space. You know, someone like me, a skateboard is like the only place where I feel like me. I get to express myself. And so it's just a continuation of providing space, you know, for us to have an experience, a pure experience with ourselves, with the world, with each other. Um, and so I was doing all the dirt work for my property and I met um, some local kids, Colin Carson, shout out, boop, 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 who uh, were incredible, you know, uh, on a bike. Um, yeah, they're incredible. They're incredible. And they're, you they're know, no the idea. free riders, they, you know, they like jumps and things like this. And like a free, regardless of the sport, these action sports, you know, skateboarding, bicycling, snowboarding, skiing, to break it down how I see it is like literally, and it's how I view the world is how can I play in this environment with the things that are here? You know, so it's highly creative people. Um, and so I met Colin at the time first, you know, and I was like, you ride on a bike, you know, like where, where do you ride? You know, I'm, again, hyper aware and like passionate about like progression and potential. You know, I'm like, where, where, where do you push yourself? And he's like, we need some big jumps, you know, here. And uh I have the equipment and I'm like, oh, I used to build some jumps and got in the back. I own the back 10 acres of my property is this giant ravine. Um, so I built a trail, call it Collins Trail. And it was instantly like back into like building jumps. I love that. And then again, back to this collective group of passionate people, what it unlocks is insane. And you know, we, I got introduced to Carson and then a couple of their friends and we all got together and yeah, when there's a, when there's a collective with a shared passion and vision, things come to life in the most magical way. So we built a pretty cool jump line, um, and then started thinking, oh, I want to do this more. And then again, back to like setting the intention and putting it out there. I'm like, all right, let's, uh, let's build another line, um, aligned with, uh, got some equipment and then someone reached out on Facebook, a local, a local writer here, um, and introduced me to YT bicycles. And, um, again, over the phone call connected with their global marketing director, shout out Jimmy. And uh, we just vibed out and over a phone call decided to build a line for uh, YT. They were, they just opened their store in Bentonville. It's incredible. Moving fast. We got a week from today till riders are on site filming. So. So yeah, built a uh, a pretty rowdy jump line and to kind of celebrate their opening in town, they brought out two of their top free rider athletes out and uh, had some fun. And it was used for their newest video that they released um, at the opening. And yeah, for me, like getting back into the, you know, building jumps and stuff, it's all like... Now I'm working with the land to create these lines and these angles. And, you know, my current paintbrush is a giant excavator, like heavy machinery right. shaping the earth. And it's easily, you know, kind of all my world's coming together. It's just an expression of my past experience and where I'm at fascinated right now is just create this like complete environment of, you know, kind of a creative in incubator for art gathering, you know, biking, you know, filming, 
and just a space that kind of like relieves any parameters or boundaries of what's possible and let's get together and just jam. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> where, where, uh, a lot of this art is kind of like you say, it inspires you when you deal with space and um, shapes. Uh, yeah, for me, like, you know, especially the outdoor art, it's like, Mother Nature is the greatest artist, right? Like, so I, I'm constantly trying to complement a setting, you know, and even some of my art is just to kind of maybe bring awareness, maybe stop, stop you and look around and then maybe you'll see, you know, these surroundings or an incredible sunset. And it was just about stopping, being present, seeing what feelings come up, seeing how you feel, seeing where you want to go with them, and uh, fully supporting you to do that. Where can we see this art locally? Because I'm looking at some of your art right now. Yeah, there's um, in Bentonville, I have four or five public artworks around. Um, obviously, the 50-foot plane which is in downtown. There's another smaller plane in Osage Park. Um, there is a really cool stainless steel crystal cluster that's... This one right here? Yeah, on a mm. pathway um, next to Red Barn Apartments. And I love this one because it's, you know, off the beaten path. It encourages, you know, you stumble upon this in the middle of the woods and that, you know... That to me is like amazing, like, whoa, how'd this get here? Right. You know, um, much more than just having some front and center. And then at Kohler, Kohler Park, um, I have, yeah, that shape, which is uh, three kind of geometric perspective pieces, which at first glance, triangle square thing, but they look uh, completely different from every angle of view. It's very cool. All right, Griffin, what is next in the future of what's your, what's your next um, huge, do you have a, do you have a next huge art thing that you're going? Yeah. Um, been thinking a lot of how to best kind of package and uh, give launch intention its proper wings and get it out to the world. Um, so I'll have some fun things in the works with that in order to do so. Um, continuing to build my studio out here, which is an ongoing um, process. And then the last couple of weeks, actually, I've locked myself in my studio and uh, building a complete new collection, you know, and I, I, I start small. I, I make something at a small scale, and then I know how to make it big. But I've come across a bunch of new shapes. Um, and actually, one of my intentions right now is to make uh, smaller works more accessible by people, by everyone um, that can fit in your home. And yeah, I uh, over the last couple of weeks, I have several pieces that I'm super excited to start sharing. And then always just open to going everywhere. <laughs> well, I want you to know that you have uh, helped me through some things just with your words and your... your um... Likewise. What would you say, a mantra? What was that? What's that? Which one? The, uh, the launch intention. Uh, responsibility, responsibility code. code. Uh, do you. That. That's what it means. Yeah, do, no, do you. you. But it's, it's nice for... Uh, you said it the other day. You were like, dude, you just need to talk. Yeah, 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 and it's funny. I have a lot of friends that remind me that what is that stupid movie? It's like you're okay, you're good enough. Is that sort of that life thing? Yeah. Um, but to be fair, you know that about yourself. Yeah, and it does take people. It it does take the people around us. You know, we all wouldn't be yeah. where we are if someone, the right person at the right time, didn't encourage Charging. us. However. And maybe that's just when we become aware of it, but you knew you yeah. know that about yourself. Yeah. And so 
maybe you just need to launch intention hat and wear it every single day. No, it's every what I, single yeah, morning every you day, see it I and agree, remind yourself of something that you want to do. I, I agree with all of that. But yeah, please talk. And the was, world needs it. Yeah, I, know, I need to talk. I probably need to call my buddy Ted. <laughs> Shout out to Ted. <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> that's the only one that I, that I really dissed and I, I probably owe him an apology to get that energy back on straight um, but I'm super excited to um, see where all this launch intention project goes Yeah, I mean it's really an impactful thing um, if you guys want to check out what uh, Griffin Loop is making currently it'll probably be on his website soon in the shopping area is that yeah. how we can do it how do we how yeah. do we contact you and best, this, best you know, way Instagram um, what's your Instagram Griffin Loop G R I F F I N L O O P um, and just in my stories I uh, I'm currently sharing a bunch of the smaller works that I'm doing and then yeah it will transition to the website um so yeah, pumped, pumped to share, share that, and uh, always pumped to like just create new things. Well, I want to thank you for a good time show. Um, thank you for being a friend. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. Once again, you can go to GriffinLoop.com. You can go to Griffin Loop on Instagram. Check out what he's doing. Always please follow and subscribe to any of the Good Time Show podcast on any platform as well. This will be a great show. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Love you. Boop, 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 boop. Well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to the Good Time Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.